you are the ASCO president which for oncology community, I think I won't be mistaken to say that is like being the president of the world. I think that women are incredible leaders and um, we do, we, we want to see more women in leadership roles. But ASCO has an amazing staff and so I get to work with the most talented staff across the organization. Let me tell you, this is my first meeting at ASCO and I am shocked and amazed beyond words. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Ellen. I am the managing editor of Onco Daily, and it is my great pleasure to welcome here today the president of ASCO, Professor Lynn Schachter. Welcome, Dr. Schachter. Thank you for being here today. It is our great pleasure to have you here, and we know you have a pretty busy schedule, so we won't keep you for a while. Thank you. Good to be with you. Good to be with you. Thank you. Let me tell you, this is my first meeting at ASCO. And I am shocked and amazed beyond words. <laughs> and I think the natural question that rises among the first timers like me is, how is ASCO this big? And what is your special secret to gather people from around the world together? Well, ASCO is an amazing meeting. And um, this year, uh, I think there's more than 40,000 uh, registered. And we had a record number of abstracts submitted, 7,000. Um, but ASCO is the meeting where the, the most innovative, cutting-edge results are presented, and people are so eager um, to hear the results of new clinical trials. Also, there's just a huge amount of effort put into the education program. So we're, everyone's coming here for the new science, the re results of the clinical trials, but half the meeting is also education. So what does every oncologist need to know about the care of patients with a variety of cancers? Uh, so it blends education, science, the latest you know, information that we can take back to our patients in clinic next week. And being here together in person, everyone's able to network, be together. I mean, you can feel the excitement yes. here and um, with great intention, you know, we have areas for people to meet, they can be outside, they can gather. That's a really important part of this, sharing ideas. I just heard this new information. How am I going to incorporate that into my practice? What do you think about it? So, and, and you know, we train from all over the world. People have an opportunity to see, opportunity to see their old friends. So a lot of needs get met at this annual meeting. Yes, I think you pretty much summarized everything and 24 hours even is not enough to get <laughs> engaged with anything. <laughs> right, uh, so w are there some highlights or major announcements at this meeting, at this year's meeting for you that are very special? Yeah, so you know, you've heard my presidential theme, the art and science of cancer care from comfort to cure. And so we planned this year to especially integrate uh, issues around communication with patients, symptom management, um, into every session. And so I think people are enjoying that as they're learning about the latest advances in lung cancer or even you know patients with brain tumors, in those same sessions, are able to learn, well, how do I need to best communicate with my patients? How do I explain prognosis? How do I share bad news? And so we have, I think, really successfully integrated the human side of the care of the patient. And that is, I mean, our oncologists are facing this every day. We have nurses here, we have pharmacists here, we have you know, oncologists that are radiation oncologists, surgeons, um, pediatric oncologists, we have patient advocates here. So we are all learning together. And the sessions, I think, really celebrate the, the, you know, the need for us to collaborate. And you mentioned the global community is here. And we're very excited about that because, the, you know, as I mentioned in my opening address, we are going to face, we are facing a crisis um, with the number of cancers around the world. And that will take a global effort to impact this. So having us all together, learning this information, sharing best practices. So my huge, a huge smile on my face right now is because this idea of this integration of science and humanity, you feel it in the sessions. 
there is a joy at this meeting that I'm, I'm, I'm just loving it as I'm walking around. And I mean, amazing results. Our plenary session had spectacular results, you know, across many different disease types. So yeah, it's been a fantastic 24 ASCO. You mentioned the global disparities and the crisis that we have uh, in oncology. So how do you think this year's meeting is going to impact the global community in oncology and what to expect next year in terms of progress and in terms of still pending progress? Well, I think, it, it, as I said, it requires this collective effort. You know, we have regulatory agencies here. I actually just saw Rick Pastor, who is the director of the oncology FDA. We have the National Cancer Institute here. We have the European Cancer Organization here. We have representatives from ESMO. We have presidents of all the major oncology societies around the world. And we are all working together to see how can we tackle this. But it's, this takes investment um, from our governments. This takes us identifying the priorities. This takes us advocating certain policies. So I don't think there is a fast solution but I, th I do think it's urgent that we are um, aligning the policies and the budgets to help address this global burden. And as you said, we want to make sure that everybody has access to care and there's huge disparities in access to care. At the, the White House and the National Cancer Plan emphasizes the cancer moonshot and the European Union emphasizing this ground shot. And so together, you know, that is getting cancer care to all patients, thinking about the new innovations with sort of the moonshot and big ideas. Um, but it is, we need the public, you know, to help us and we need um, the resources to tackle the problem. Yes, all of that sounds very, very complicated and challenging and just to see uh, this much uh, happening at the annual event, I'm guessing that being the ASCO president full time is even more challenging. So how do you manage and balance being the ASCO president with your other professional activities and personal life? Great question. Well, you know, <clears throat> you probably have figured out that ASCO has an amazing staff. And so I get to work with the most talented staff across the organization. And ASCO is blessed to have so many volunteers. So again, clinicians, nurses, patient advocates from around the world sit on our various committees to do the work of this meeting. So it's been a really um, special year and I've been able to travel around the world and meet so many people. Um, I do have a busy practice at the University of Pennsylvania. I, I direct the Tara Miller Melanoma Center there. And um, so it is hard to balance. And um, I have twin boys who are 24. And, um, and they were here at the meeting, which they've never been to ASCO before. So it's been, um, it's been, there are challenges to figure out how to balance all this. But I've loved it and have had you know, tremendous support um, you know, in my home life um, and at my home institution and um, at ASCO to get this all done. Do your signs like the meeting? Are they planning to come back? I don't know. They <laughs> did really enjoy it. And they, because they got the badges, they walked through and they were, they were stunned, as you just said, by the size of it, just by the complexity of it. They, they had no idea. They know I go to ASCO every year. They didn't really know what that meant. And so it's good for them to have an appreciation for uh, what is happening when I'm away. Yes. yes. Yeah. Let me say, you are the ASCO president, which for oncology community, I think I won't be mistaken to say that is like being the president of the world. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I would not agree. but <laughs> <laughs> What would your advice be to young aspiring leaders uh, or people who are trying to become leaders, especially for women? throughout their career uh, to work for and to aim for to become the president of the world? <laughs> <laughs> well, my advice would be, I mean, what one is that, um, well, I think that women are incredible leaders. And um, we do, we, we want to see more 
women in leadership roles. Um, and ASCO's done a phenomenal job there. 61% of the ASCO board right now are women. Um, and ASCO has a number of leadership development programs. But one thing I want to mention is, <clears throat> is about intention. So you asked me about, <clears throat> you know, this meeting. But the planning of how I wanted this to go and the integration of my message began two years ago. It began with the selection of who the education chair was, Dr. Tom LeBlanc. He is a leukemia physician, but he's also a palliative care physician. So I, and I, and my main reason for running to become ASCO president was the platform really that I've shared with you and the presidential theme. And so whatever leadership role, whatever, you know, that person is trying to move something forward, just if you, there is so much intention and planning around that. And there are many steps to that. So I, I think it's an important part of leadership is understanding the what what you need to do to then achieve your vision. There is much intention about that. It's a very important skill. We need to have a plan. Yes. Very yes. detailed plan. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> to end the interview, could you name uh, some of the highlights and milestones of your career that you feel are so important to lead you here today? Yes, well, one, I've had um, <clears throat> great mentors myself. And, you know, we're using this other term called sponsors. Sponsors are somebody who more publicly advocates for you and helps you, um, uh, you know, have new opportunities. So uh, Dr. John Glick, um, who's my mentor at the University of Pennsylvania, he's a past ASCO president. He really helped me, I think, ultimately to get more involved with ASCO. But really, my work has been driven by, um, you know, patient care and melanoma. And um, I've had a you know, interest in this disease for more than 35 years, and that we've seen this progress in the treatment of melanoma during my career has been incredible. So 10 years ago, we didn't have these effective treatments. So I just can't believe the progress in science to new drugs to really, we are curing some patients with stage four melanoma. That has been incredible. And thank you for that. Thank you for being here today and accepting our invitation. It was a pleasure. I hope to see you next year. Very good. Very nice to meet you. Thank Enjoy. You. Okay. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.